And welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we keep hearing uh, this from the Obama administration, from Barack Obama himself, that uh, health care reform, that Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, whatever you want to call it, is the law of the land. It was passed by Congress, upheld by the Supreme Court, and it was you know, litigated, if you will, in uh, the presidential election in 2012. Get over it. It's the law of the land. Uh, but, of course, Barack Obama has, like he has with so many other laws, decided which parts of the law he will enforce. He gave some people a pass. Um, but uh, there is a, a man out there who is trying to do something about that. And we are joined right now by Dr. Larry Kawa of Kawa Orthodontics. And uh, he, along with Judicial Watch, have filed suit uh, against the U.S. Department of the Treasury, the Secretary of the Treasury, the IRS, the IRS Acting Director, challenging. Obama's decision to uh, delay the enactment of the so-called employer mandate. Uh, why should some people get a year uh, when the individual doesn't get a year to, uh, to get involved with Obamacare? So uh, we're joined right now by the good doctor. Hey, doctor, thank you for joining us, and uh, this is very interesting. Thanks for having me on. All right, so what, what motivated you, the good people at Judicial Watch, we do a lot with them, uh, but what, made, what motivated you to take on, in effect, here the U.S. government over, uh, over this, uh, this uh, issue? Well, I feel that he crossed the red line when he chose to waive the employer mandate. He generally rules by executive fiat. He feels that he's a Congress of one. But just because the law is named after him does not empower him to pick and choose which parts of the law he's going to enforce for the sake of political convenience. Article 1 of the Constitution says that Congress is the only body of government that has the right to make or change a law. Article 2 says that the president has a fiduciary duty to enforce those laws. And not only is he not enforcing them, but he's changing them. And it underscores the hypocrisy of the fact that when he took his presidential oath, he swore to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Interestingly enough, it's he who we need to protect it from. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, 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 and I ask the question, maybe you have an answer to this, uh, and I get frustrated because I've had congressman after congressman on this show, and, and they, they say that it's a violation of the Constitution, uh, his picking and choosing, uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, giving exemptions uh, and, and delaying the employer mandate. And I, and I say to myself, well, why doesn't someone in Congress uh, go to court and do something about it? But I guess, I guess they don't have legal standing. Is that correct? Well, that's one of two great questions that no one ever answers. The, the answer is yes, you are correct. They do not have legal standing because we are suing, and anyone who would sue, would sue under what's called the Administrative Procedure Act in federal district court, which basically is, is trying to get an injunction to block what he is doing as it being in a in brazen overreach or a power grab. But the reason that Congress can't sue, very simply put, is because they don't have injury, which is standing, which is what you need in order to be a plaintiff on a lawsuit and be heard. Now, how are you going to prove that you're injured in something that you're not only exempt from, but you and everybody in your family gets a $5,000 per head tax-free bonus. And it's just exemplary of the fact that they're getting preferential treatment and Congress is picking winners and losers, victors and victims, moving the goalposts every time they, you know, that they choose to. And, uh, you know, the Republicans in the House are trying to prevent that. But a few weeks ago, David Axelrod said, if the Republicans think that he's doing something illegal, why don't they just sue him? My answer is, good idea. So I looked into it, and uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and I looked into it on eHow. Just kidding, and and I realized <laughs> that the way you sue is under the Administrative Procedure Act. Congress cannot sue. You have to be injured to sue, and basically you have to be, I guess, what you'd consider a masochistic large employer, because if I win. I get, I get taxed. I, I was going to say that. By the way, we're, we're talking to Dr. Larry Kawa of Kawa Orthodontics uh, in Florida. He employs 70 full-time workers. So I was, I was going to ask you that question, that if you win, uh, you're going to suffer the consequences of your victory. So, so let me ask you. So I, 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 I guess that it's uh, your, your, your feelings, as previously stated, about the Constitution and, and Obama and, uh, and uh, to do what's right as far as a government goes and not to be able to selectively enforce the law that trumps uh, the uh, financial consequences that you'll suffer if you win. Absolutely. I would rather relinquish my money than relinquish the powers of the Constitution. So that's why I've chosen to, to launch the suit. I'd also point out 
I am not here to dismantle the law. I am here to make sure that the law is enforced. And I'm not trying to rush it. I simply want it to be enforced on time. It says in no uncertain terms in the law that the effective date shall be January 1st, 2014. So what part of shall does he not understand? And, you know, as an interesting perspective on this, there are two mandates in the law that are the centerpieces of the law. One is the employer mandate, which says that large employers must pay a tax. The other is the individual mandate, which says that the average working American with calloused hands has to pay a tax. So this president went ahead and, and gave what he, in his own words, terms as transition relief to the large employers, and in the same breath denied that same transition relief to the average working American. If he was truly caring, he would have not only waived it for both groups, he would have done it the right way and done it through Congress. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, interesting. Uh, the Republicans are trying to g give uh, equality, if you will, to the individual, or, or the, at least they had been in many of the CRs that they passed. Uh, but I heard Michelle Bachman about a week ago, right, maybe a day into this or maybe right before the shutdown started, where she said that she thinks a good strategy might be to adjust what you're going for, but only that the Congress would do it in their, in their CR, the Republicans in the House, that they would insist that the whole law be followed, which would, in effect, give you what you're looking for in your lawsuit, uh, but they haven't gone that route. It's, it's uh, I guess you could say, strategically impossible for them to do that. Sounds good on paper, when, but when you do the legal autopsy on it, there's no way that they could do what we're doing in, in a federal court. We're actually seeking two things. Number one is an injunction to prevent him from waiving the employer mandate for political convenience. And number two, we're seeking a declaratory action, which is basically a judge to memorialize the fact that this was an attempted illegal maneuver. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Doc, what's, what's the first uh, the, or the next court uh, uh, appearance uh, that you anticipate? How, how, f how fast will this go? Because, as you point out, uh, that this is supposed to take effect in uh, January 1st, 2014. So uh, will the court uh, expedite this in any way, shape, or form? I have confidence in the judicial system, possibly the last, last branch of government that I, I do have confidence in. And, yes, I do think that they're going to try to get this done in a timely fashion. It's going to get, you know, no doubt get appealed from the district court ultimately to the Supreme Court, and we're trying to do this all on, on uh, the proper timeline. Well, and kudos to, uh, to Judicial Watch, but really, kudos to you for undertaking this as a private citizen, an employer uh, who's going to suffer the consequences if he wins, and for standing on your principles. I, I really do admire that. Well, I'm one of many Americans who feel that we've had enough, and I could say that there are still patriots, millions of patriots like myself that would put themselves in harm's way and say, look, uh, you know, basically, you want to attack the Constitution, you're going to have to come through us. Gotcha. Uh, doctor, thank you. Good luck, and let's stay in touch and, 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 and keep us informed along the way. Thanks for your time, Steve. All right, my thank pleasure. You. That's uh, Dr. Larry Kawa of Kawa Orthodontics, who is suing, uh, along with Judicial Watch, the U.S. government, to uh, have that, um, that um, mandate, the employer mandate, take effect when it's supposed to, according to the law, not uh, give a year leeway the way Obama has uh, granted the waiver to employers. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to have Nick Tate. Nick Tate is the author of the humongous best-selling book, The Obamacare Survival Guide. He will be on with us, and you're not going to want to miss that interview. And if you want to go to the website, it's Obamacare311.com. Check it out in advance. Order the book. Everybody I know has this book, and it is a number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide. Nick Tate will be here with us tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. Folks, you want to weigh in, 855-777-9660, right here on The Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV, and Reading.